Now, I'm going to assume that he's done his study in the Greek and he's looked at the Greek lexical sources because he made a claim. Guys, I want you to explain. It cannot be the Holy Spirit. It cannot be a spirit because a spirit isn't it. And yet the paraclete, he can hear and speak and is a hymn. This again either shows he's ignorant of what the Bible teaches about spirits and about the Holy Spirit or he's being misleading. And then he did something that was very, very, I mean, anyway, I'll give him the benefit of be charitable. He's an ignoramus. He doesn't know the Bible because when I said that Jesus sends the paraclete. No! If you go to John 14, it's the Father. Well, hold on. John 15, 26 is there. It's part of Jesus' speech. So let's go there, and I'm going to ask you some questions. So this time, you don't do the tap dance and try to ignore it. Even chapter 16 says the same thing. Because you quoted chapter 16. John 14, verses 16 to 17. We're going to read now in context. Are you trying to pit the Bible against each other? Because you know, this shows Muhammad is a false prophet again. John 14, verses 16 to 17. Again, 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 I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. I will ask the Father, the Father, remember that, Shay, because I got questions for you, and he will give another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him nor know him. But you know him. He's talking to Peter, James, and John, because he abides with you and will be in you. So here are my first two questions. Number one, it says that the paraclete, the helper, was there with the disciples. The disciples knew who he was and the spirit would be in them. I want you to answer the question, are you saying Muhammad was there and that Muhammad would then indwell the apostles? That's my first question. My second question, Jesus says, I'll ask the Father, the Father will send him. Now I want you to say to everyone here that the Father of Jesus Christ, the Father of Christians, is the Father of Muhammad. Allah is the Father. Yeah. Muhammad is the Son of Allah because it says the Father will send him. The Father will send him. And then the verse you quoted, John 14, 26, but the helper, the spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So the Father sends the helper and the disciples knew who the helper was because Jesus says he's already here with you. He's now here with you and shall be in you. So again, answer those two questions. Was Muhammad there and did Muhammad live in the disciples? He was there already. Don't ignore that like Didat used to do. He was there with them and the Father sent him. So I want you to say Allah is my my father, Muhammad's father, Jesus' father, and he sent Muhammad. And then Jesus goes on to say, he didn't stop. Wait, let me make the point. The same John, I don't care if you don't like it, it's there. John 15, 26, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, whom I will send to you from the father, that is the spirit of truth, who comes from the father, he will testify about me. And John 16, 7, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So if you read in context, Father and Jesus together, together, not one or the other, together, Father and Jesus send the helper and Jesus says, I will send him from the Father. He comes out of the Father and the Father is in heaven. So here's my third question. I want you to tell everyone, yes, Jesus in heaven with Allah sent Muhammad from Allah because the helper is going to come out of the Father and Jesus was already with Muhammad. Muhammad, Muhammad is already with Jesus at that time because Jesus says he's already with you. So I want you to say, is Allah your father, Muhammad's father, as he's Jesus' father and the disciples' father? Do you believe Muhammad was there because he said he is here with you? And do you agree now, Jesus with the father together, not either or, both of them together sent Muhammad from Allah out of heaven because that's where Jesus says the helper will come. Please answer those questions. Okay. John chapter 16 verses 12 to 14 starts like this. I have yet many things to say unto you. I have yet, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So now, now this particular phrase says that he is not there. The Holy Spirit is not there. So I have may, yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How bit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. So now the the context of starts with that. Uh, you people are not ready to uh, bear any everything. So it is not saying that Holy Spirit is at that time. So these people are out of question. So Holy Spirit is coming after these people. It is not at that time. Now you said God is the Father. God is the Father. It, it is in your Bible. I said that Jesus did not use the word Father. And I gave the example. Jesus did not use the word Father. But you are taking as Father. Okay, you take as Father. But when you say that 
did G- will jesus go, will jesus send him no jesus is not the father jesus is not god almighty he will not send prophet muhammad he could not send prophet muhammad jesus was a whole human being he was a human being he did not send anybody but you quoted john chapter 7 john chapter 16 verse number 7 and john chapter 15 verse number 26 that whom i will send unto you you from the father this is a problem yes yeah, i send into the father but what i say that 14 16 also say and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter so here god is giving the comforter it is not it is not jesus giving the comforter god is giving the comforter so if we know that god is giving the comforter then when wherever this i will give you comforter i will give you the comforter from the father it becomes metaphorical it is become metaphorical in a sense that after him prophet muhammad will come because prophet muhammad is next after prophet jesus jesus of the previous prophet 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 muhammad is after prophet jesus this will be metaphorical in that sense and you cannot you cannot take everything of the bible as a gospel truth you cannot take everything as the gospel truth bible is not wholly reliable there are problems in the bible there are problems in the bible you cannot take bible 100% reliable you have to pick and choose what is compatible you cannot take 100% of bible as reliable because there are enough proof for for the bible that it is not 100% reliable reliable this is not the topic i cannot go in that we can go in future time where the bible is the word of god so we cannot take 100% bible because 100% bible is not reliable guys did you notice he said there is a problem john 16:7 john 15:26 there's a problem but now notice how it convenient oh but that's not literal that's metaphorical so the father sending the helper that actually is literal but when jesus sends the helper with the father it's metaphorical how convenient for my muslim friend see jesus sending metaphorical but when the father sends it's literal no father and son together send the holy spirit who is the helper from the father to the believers it's literal there's nothing metaphorical that's number 1 did you catch it he goes jesus never called god the father and yet the verses he quoted he quoted them to prove it's muhammad jesus calls god the father so notice how his <clears throat> method works if the verse proves muhammad is a false prophet and contradicts my position then it's either metaphorical or it's a corruption but when i can misinterpret the verse and get away with it then it's actual and it supports my position what an embarrassment religion what an embarrassment dean that you have to twist and lie to pervert the bible to prove your case but i understand you're following allah who's khair al makarin like allah is a deceiver and a conniver you are following the example of your god but then he kept saying The context of John 16 it begins 12 13 no it doesn't in that chapter it begins at 7 but the discussion of the paraclete starts in John 14 16 17 but then i want to read John 16 15 same he quoted remember 12 13 right John 16 15 all things that the father has are mine everything that the father has belongs to me the entire creation belongs to the father everything in heaven and earth belongs to the father Shuay belongs to the father. Muslims belong to the father. Muhammad belongs to the father. And Jesus says all things that the father owns are mine. So in that very chapter Jesus just said he owns your prophet, he owns you, he owns your land, he owns your home, he owns everything and even owns your Jibril. Now you don't believe that why are you quoting it? And then in John 14 16 17 you again went to the verse that says you know him he's with you already and you didn't answer the question John 14 16 17 what you quoted you know him Peter you know him he's with you and shall be in you and that's what Jesus meant I have to go away for him to be in you because if I'm here he won't be in you he's in me with me but if I leave he'll be in you so you didn't answer the question I want you to tell everyone yes Muhammad was there with Jesus in Jesus and Peter knew Muhammad was there and then Muhammad entered Peter James and John you still don't answer those questions final shot let's see how well you do see regarding father i know the word says father in the present bible the word father is there but when Jesus spoke he did not use the word father father business came into picture after 200 years after 200 years you don't have any scripture from the first century you don't have any scripture from the second century you don't have any scripture from the third century what you have scriptures from the fourth century onwards the king james king james version is based on the 12th century manuscript so you can't believe that you can't have you don't have any scripture from the first century so what i am claiming 
that Jesus in his lifetime, he did not use the word father. In your scripture, in your Bible, the word father is there. The word father is there, I agree, because this scripture is coming after the period, after the, uh, after the deadline, after the period, after 200 years, uh, uh, because till 210 CE, the word father was not in use. Now you say that father, father has given everything. I don't believe everything of the Bible. I, I don't believe everything of the New Testament. The Gospels are not 100% correct. The Gospels, the Bible is not 100% correct. I, I'm, I'm not agreeing with that to believe that uh, Jesus sent Prophet Muhammad or Jesus or Prophet Muhammad belongs to Prophet Jesus. No, Prophet Jesus was the messenger of God. Prophet Muhammad was the messenger of God. And there were all the, there are many prophets and messengers of God there. They are brothers to each other. They, nobody is superior. Nobody is inferior to them. So here's my final point, guys. Here's the final point. You just heard he do exactly what I said. Remember what I said? When the very passage is equal, folks, go back to day one. He started the attacks on the Bible. I responded, but then he accuses me of attacking Muhammad. Secondly, he quoted John chapter 14 and John 16, not me. Now, guys, notice the method. And tomorrow, when I make a presentation against Muhammad, I'm going to show Muhammad confirmed the Bible that I have, meaning what he said about the Bible, again, condemns Muhammad as a false prophet, a tool of the devil. But guys, notice his, past, uh, his method. Yeah, see, he does say Father, but it's corrupt. Yeah, Jesus did say that he would send the Spirit. That's metaphorical. Yeah, Jesus did say all things belong to him, but your Bible is corrupt. I don't believe it anyway. But hold on, Shuei. You quoted John 16. You quoted John 14. You quoted John 15. So if they're good enough to prove your position, then Christians are within their right to use those very verses you quoted to show your prophet is an antichrist, a son of David, a son of the devil, whom Jesus has condemned to hell. Even if you don't like it, thank you. You quote it, you're stuck with it. And according to the words of the very John you quoted, Muhammad is an antichrist. He's a false prophet under the feet of Jesus, condemned by Jesus, the son of God. I pray you repent before you end up with your prophet in hell. May Jesus have mercy on you. I'm done, David.